Oh, hey, I guess it's time to finally do this. Hey everybody, welcome back to Universal Studios, where I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but we're less than a month away from Halloween Horror Nights. Halloween Horror Nights this year, September 6th through November 2nd. And you guys know the drill, 10 haunted houses, five set scare zones, live entertainment, and so much more. Let's go in and talk a little bit about Halloween Horror Nights. Now we've been doing Halloween Horror Nights for a while. We met a lot of you guys through Horror Nights. We picked up a lot of viewers through Horror Nights. We love Horror Nights. Chances are very likely that we'll be at Horror Nights very often, as usual. And I'll say this, over the years, Universal has really kind of amped up the Halloween part of things and kind of maybe lessened a little bit of the horror, at least the gory horror that the event featured in some years past. Walking in between Shrek and the Minions, you can see that there's lights out here already. What they use for the scare zone for lighting this up. And while no announcements have been made yet for what scare zones are coming to Halloween Horror Nights, as at least at the time of recording, it's believed this scare zone will be called Anarch Aid. Witty. And I do want to give credit to HHN Nightmares as they put together the speculation map pretty consistently year after year. That's what we're using for any of the areas that we're not sure ourselves of what properties will be there, or what properties will exist, or where they'll be. But you guys should definitely check them out. We'll put a link in the description below. You guys should know, editing issues and recording issues plague me consistently. If you ever see me in the parks, I'm recording things five or six times to try to get the wording right. And I ended up screwing up one part here where I wanted to say Universal has co-headliners for the big houses this year, one of which, right behind me, Ghostbusters, a white whale being brought to Halloween Horror Nights this year. But they are bringing a haunted house and it is the biggest soundstage house this year and it is based off of the classic Ghostbusters. There's a lot of discussion whether Ghostbusters is actually a Horror Nights property or scary. I'll be completely honest, I love Ghostbusters. If you guys saw part of our whole display case of memorabilia is dedicated to Ghostbusters, stoked that Ghostbusters is coming, but I also think it's a comedy property. That said, I'm not unhappy that it's coming as a haunted house. Universe has been able to do wonders in the past with properties like Aliens vs. Predator, Stranger Things. I think as a fan of the franchise, whether it's comedy or horror or horror comedy, it's going to be an amazing treat to walk through. Pictures leaked this week of kind of a Pepper's Ghost type effect with Slimer. I'm really excited to see all of that stuff. While I think Horror Nights has really kind of scaled back some of the more intense horror and kind of broadened the appeal to a mainstream customer, Ghostbusters, it's gonna be awesome. It's not only gonna be awesome, it's gonna be freaking awesome. Now when we look at the streets of New York, there's actually a lot of work being done already for Horror Nights, the big tower here. Streets of New York, scare zone, rumored to be based off of Zombieland. Better get your cardio up. This is arguably their biggest scare zone every year. And one of the two most featured because people need to traverse the back of the park to get to the haunted houses over here. And likewise in Hollywood, we're being interrupted by the Blues Brothers here. They're on a mission. They also have the doors closed off outside of Macy's. And we've got like a speaker here. Nothing changed in the windows. As far as entrances for haunted houses, coming up past the New York Public Library, which really kind of could have been leveraged more for Ghostbusters, maybe. Maybe I'm speaking ahead of time. You'll have the entrances for both Us, which was just announced last week, and Yeti, an original ground up production. We finally got to watch Us last week while we were on a plane commuting over to Los Angeles. I was not the biggest fan of the movie, although well, I'll say, seems to be greatly divided. The movie seems to have some huge fans, and there's some people that genuinely do not like the movie. I did not like anything about the movie. I think it's limited to what they can do with that house, because quite honestly, the movie is based off of clones or dupes 
of the same people that star in the movie. I don't think they're gonna have a clone of me in the house. Could be wrong. Otherwise, it's just kind of like slipknotty type jumpsuit people with some scissors consistently. Maybe a funhouse full of mirrors. And as for Yeti, it's developed by the same people that brought the attack of the Swamp Yeti to the B movie house last year. Slot of Cinema for those that don't remember. It's going to be based off of an original property with some loggers, and campers, not only fighting the elements, but fighting some very scary versions of the Yeti. I'm wondering if they're going to employ the same cold air conditioning blowdown effect that they had in the Poltergeist house last year because that house was so cold my glasses fogged up every time that we left. And then we talked about the other co-headlining house of the year moving from the biggest soundstage last year to another soundstage will be the return of Stranger Things. And to be honest, as far as the time of this recording, I haven't watched beyond three episodes into the second season, so I haven't seen most of two and all of three. That said, this year's house is based off of a mix of season two and three. So there's a lot to be excited for if you're a Stranger Days fan. Just coming back up towards the front of the park by the Music Plaza because this will be the entrance for Ghostbusters this year. Only a couple more weeks until we're loaded with nothing but cutbacks or turnbacks here. Also of note, in the streets of New York area, this is where the main Stay and Scream location is. For those that don't know, Stay and Scream basically meaning you have a day ticket to Universal Studios and you have a ticket to Halloween Horror Nights. You can go into a special holding area and get into at least two, possibly three of the haunted houses before the rest of the public on the outside can get in. Stay and Scream was absolutely packed last year. I need to get the hydrant on because it is so ungodly hot today. Just imagine this entire area basically filled up like a general admission concert. That's Stay and Scream. We've got some angry mummies. Pharaohs. Another pharaoh. This street that is behind the streets in New York, next to the lagoon, and by Transformers. Last year, this was for the mega hit Scare Zone Killer Clowns from Outer Space. This year, it's rumored the Scare Zone is going to be the music and films of Rob Zombie. The Chapsies family loves Rob Zombie. We just saw Rob Zombie at Welcome to Rockville a couple months ago. All I can say is if this is truly going to be the music and films of Rob Zombie, they better have aliens in a UFO. Walking towards the back of the park, this might be the scariest thing in the park, but actually Fast and Furious will be open during Halloween Horror Nights. At least that's the word as of now. Some music by train as we go into Harry Potter land. That's kind of scary. When we walk past London and Diagon Alley, one of the questions we get all the time from you guys is whether there'll be any type of haunting event within this area. And the answer is no. While the area is open during Halloween Horror Nights, there's no scare acting taking place or no haunted houses in there. While we walk back towards the Fear Factor stage, you can see not in production today. So they're preparing for Halloween Horror Nights. This is where Bill and Ted had been hosted in the past and last year Academy of Villains took this space. It is expected that Academy of Villains will return to this stage again this year. I'm looking forward to seeing what Academy of Villains can do this year. I thought the show last year, although it was a much bigger production, didn't have necessarily the same heart that we've seen before while it was on the street. Again, just my opinion. I did love the production though. This year I'd like to see them come back with pure fire. I'm back behind this fence and heading into the extended queue of Men in Black. For the last couple of years, there's been a haunted house back here, and Chance back there in the past, and Blumhouse the last couple of years. It is rumored this year that the house in the back here will be the house of a thousand corpses. I'm really excited about that property coming to Halloween Horror Nights. I feel that besides the original properties that Universal has this year, House of a Thousand Corpses has the potential to be the most gory and scariest house out of all of them. And now approaching this back rear corner to the right of Men in Black, to the left of this Coca-Cola stand, we'll have two houses back in this area. Both original Universal properties, Depths of Fear, and Nightingale's Blood Pit. 
I'm gonna cheat here and read from the Universal press release, but depths of fear, if you have a fear of order and what lies beneath, your skin will crawl with this new haunted house. Depths of fear mixes all the elements of the unknown with underwater elements, monstrous creatures, and a countdown to a disastrous fate. I'm thinking it'll be similar to what we've seen before in other scare zones and houses here at Universal with the underwater theming. And Nightingale's Blood Pit is the latest installment in that creature's lineage throughout Halloween Horror Nights. Again, from the Universal website, Ancient Rome is suffering its worst drought in centuries. The ruthless emperor has declared the gladiatorial games to continue nonstop until the rains return. The gruesome bloodshed of games is horrifying enough, but then come the creatures. Heading out towards the Simpsons area. There's no such scare zone here, but it is expected that some form of chainsaw type clowns will appear. Walking into Kid Zone, where there's an entrance for two more houses. Now the entrance to Universal Monsters should be behind me. Universal Monsters Haunted House should feature a classic blend of creatures like Frankenstein, Creature from the Black Lagoon, etc in a reimagined type house. Now they did have a classic monsters house out in HHN Hollywood last year. The understanding is this is not the same house just being ported over to Orlando. Now the house entrance that goes to the ET extended queue is expected to be Graveyard Games, which was just announced this week. This is another universal ground up property. Guess we'll travel through a cemetery, roaming through mausoleums, and decaying piles of coffins. Universal also announced that there'll be an interactive element when you're in the queue for this house that you can use through Facebook Messenger. We'll be able to speak to certain team members. I'm sure there'll be more information to come on that. Now walking back towards the Central Park area, this is usually one of the most beautiful scare zones because they have such a tight corridor to decorate and the trees. And it's also usually one of the most scary scare zones because it's so dark. This year, it's rumored that this scare zone will be based on Vikings. That's right. Vikings. We've got some lighting towers happening here already. I don't mean to be down on the scare zone just based off a name, but the only thing that really comes to mind now at Vikings is the cheesy tag team in the WWE. If it's some huge guys like Zach Wilde dressed as Vikings, eh, it could be a little petrifying. And then coming into Hollywood, this is generally their second biggest scare zone or partnered with the New York scare zone because there's so many people that travel back and forth to the back of the park here. Last year this was Chucky. This year it's rumored to be plastic surgery. Honestly, one of the most difficult things about putting together a preview video or talking about Halloween Horror Nights at this point is that there's so little information about, especially to scare zones, some of the houses. Only a couple weeks before this is back to Mel's Diane. In the distance, there are lights that are out already and some lighting presses down the block for, to support the scare zone. Take a quick AC break in the horror makeup show. What do you guys think? Are you hyped yet? Here's some former HHN props. Coming into the gift shop. First thing you see, classic monsters. Lots of merchandise for classic monsters. And then lots of merchandise for Ghostbusters. I expect a lot more merchandise for the Halloween Horror Nights season related to the house. Real Ghostbusters, Stay Puff Towel, figures, pops, lunchboxes, signs, and a host of Classic Monsters merchandise. Well, Classic Monsters merchandise was rumored to be put out and see how it sells as well as the house this year to judge about a Classic Monsters land at Epic Universes, the next gate that will be built and was announced uh, two weeks ago. Oh no! Anyone have $565 I can borrow? Whoa! That's cool. Got a PKE meter signed by Sigourney Weaver. Ecto 1 signed by Sigourney Weaver. 600 bucks. Slimer. 500 bucks. Just monsters, monsters, monsters. And more monsters, monsters, monsters. 
And even more monsters, monsters, monsters. And the props from the fly. The former T2 back there. Vigo, signed by Sigourney Weaver, 950 bucks. And then more classic monsters. And then a life-size Slimer, 1625, life-size. A little closer look at these lighting truss. trusses, trusses, trusses. The way that these lighting trusses are set up kind of makes me think that there'll either be banners hanging from them or maybe like mini stage areas out in front. We haven't really seen where there'd be like a meet and greet or a photo op type area this year, at least yet. I'm thinking this might be it with maybe some of the characters from the houses. Just a wild guess. The last house location to talk about is within the Shrek building and the entrance is over here just beyond the Brown Derby hat shop. And the house that's located back here is a return of the killer clowns from outer space. Last year it was a scare zone. This year they get their own haunted house. Fans of the franchise are stoked. Me, I'm on the fence. Those costumes last year were very bulky and difficult to move around. I'm sure the house is gonna look gorgeous. I'm just not sure how mobile some of the actors are gonna be. But that wraps up all of the houses and scare zones for Halloween Horror Nights 29. We'll give me some more detailed thoughts when we get back home as you can hear a little bit of thunder happening above. Before we leave, we're walking over to ride Fast and Furious, believe it or not, but a little Ghostbusters 2 music happening in the background. Also, somebody saved that chef. All right, we're back home from Universal a couple hours later. Do you want to touch on a couple last things before we wrap up the video? Walking through the park today did get me very hyped up for the event. I had not been feeling too hyped up uh, to date. And I think when everybody kept asking, you know, are you going to do an HHN update video, etc. Um, I wasn't feeling it at that point, but I am feeling it now. Um, there's a lot of things to really look forward to uh, at Halloween Horror Nights 29. I think the biggest knock that folks are going to say, um, and me as well to some degree, is that Halloween Horror Nights is not necessarily all that scary. There are definitely going to be some things that are going to be scary at HHN this year and there's definitely going to be some things that are more eye candy. HHN is traditionally a gorgeous event to attend. It is extremely slick. Um, they typically pull in a lot of IPs and this year they were very creative um, in pulling in agreements with Netflix for Stranger Things uh, and I believe it's Sony uh, for uh, Ghostbusters. I could be wrong but I think it's Sony. Um, and working around the fact that they don't have uh, contracts with Warner Brothers um, like they have in the past or Fox, you know, with uh, Disney coming in and buying Fox. So um, as far as IPs go, uh, I think that they've done a really good job. I am really looking forward to House of a Thousand Corpses. I am extremely looking forward to going through Ghostbusters more as a fan and looking at that eye candy uh, than anything else. As far as the scary goes, um, for folks that are going to the event and they've never gone before, um, I think every year when we've put these guides together and we've kind of said, you know, there's a disclaimer on the Halloween Horror Nights website where the event is geared towards a crowd that's like uh, a mature enough, like 13 and over type crowd. Um, I think that there's uh, probably less on the scare factor this year that, uh, you know, you, obviously your mileage may vary with how your children react to horror um, but you know if I needed to put a rating scale on things I think very much you know as far as events in the central Florida area you have Mickey's not so scary that I would say is kind of like a rated G event then you have Halloween Horror Nights which is kind of like a rated PG event maybe PG 13 to some degree um, and then you kind of move into like the scream Scream-A-Get-Ins, which for us hands down our favorite scary event in the central Florida area um, and Scream Again and in Dade City, we'll get to uh, doing a little bit more talking about um, horror on the channel a little bit further down the line. But I would say that that's more like PG-13 R type scares at Scream Again. And so um, there are some things that are definitely going to scare you at Halloween Horror Nights. But 
maybe not the scariest of events, but certainly one of the most fun events and absolutely, hands down, the glossiest of events. They do a fantastic job at presenting um, a Halloween-based event. As far as tickets go, the biggest question that we always get is, I'm trying to go to Halloween Horror Nights and I only have one night or I have two nights or whatever. What tickets do you recommend? We always recommend getting a ticket with Express. Any type of Express. And Halloween Horror Nights offers tickets where you can go for either one day up to um, every single day of the event. Um, and of course, cost varies based off of the ticket that you're buying. So you can either buy a single day ticket or you could buy the Rush of Fear, which is basically the first three weeks of the event including Saturdays, and then there's Frequent Fear, which is um, basically the weekend without Fridays, and then there's Frequent Fear Plus, which is every day except for Fridays and Saturdays, um, and then you have the Express option. I cannot recommend Express enough to anybody that's looking to try to get through all of the houses. Um, if you're buying a multi-date ticket and you're a local um, and you don't want to spring for the Express because it is extremely pricey, um, you can just get by with like a frequent fear and hope that you can hit like some houses one night and some houses another night. If you're coming to the event one night, um, I would not recommend doing the event without some type of express. And that's even with doing the stay and scream type uh, of situation before the gates open. The lines the last couple of years especially have been astronomical. Um, and if you look at our video that we shot, for opening day last year, uh, even with Stay and Scream, it was a mess trying to get into the houses. Immediately at opening, the lines for Stranger Things were like an hour and a half to two hours, etc. Um, and I don't know, to me, I guess it all is, what is your time worth to you? Um, and is it worth waiting in those lines? Um, to me, it's not worth waiting in those lines. Even when you have Express, you're still waiting in the lines somewhat, but you're not waiting two hours to get into a house that has a walk through like a conga line for you know a good like three minutes worth of the, the time so um, I would suggest you guys study the ticket page figure out what works best for you price wise and time wise um, and certainly um, any chance that you have to be able to buy an express type of package I would advise to do so the RIP tours are fantastic also they also get a little bit pricey. And that's about going to do it for us. We're going to be out at Halloween Horror Nights often this year, uh, as we have in prior years. We're looking forward to seeing what the event has to offer, and we're looking forward to saying hello to so many of you guys. We've met so many viewers over the last few years through Halloween Horror Nights. I'm really excited to be able to get back out there again and say hello to some of you guys. You guys can let us know in the comments below which houses or scare zones or even the show that you're looking forward to. I know there's only one show, uh, but maybe you're not looking forward to that show. Maybe you wish that Bill and Ted was back, um, but give us some ideas down below. Um, but on that note, thank you very much for coming along. Thank you very much for all of your likes and comments and subscriptions. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Have a great night. We'll see you guys. Subscribe to the Cheap Seats. Otherwise, they'll be looking in your dreams for you. <laughs>